What makes one graphics card stand out from another? An interesting question that Galax thinks they have the answer to. This is the RTX 4070 EX Gamer. And being a 4070, it has roughly the same performance of an RTX 3080, but with the additional benefit of DLSS 3 with frame generation. But that's the same for all 4070s and doesn't make this one special compared to the Founders Edition, for example but they are quite different. Different cooler designs, different power solutions, and some interesting software implementations that Galax thinks gamers will prefer. So today, we're going to directly compare NVIDIA's 4070 Founders Edition to the Galax EX Gamer. We're going to look at the physical differences of these two cards before we then run them through some tests and overclocking to see if the Galax is worth the extra money for, spoiler alert, slightly higher performance. And stay tuned to the end, as I'm also going to show you guys a new tool for determining which GPU to buy based on value. But let's check out the 4070 EX Gamer versus the Founders Edition from NVIDIA. Let me explain. Here's a fun game. I'm going to guess common issues you've been dealing with while browsing the web. Painfully slow speeds. Check ads taking over the content all the time. Massive memory usage, most definitely. And having to pay for a separate VPN service just to keep yourself protected. Well, fortunately, there is a simple fix for all of that. Let me introduce you to today's video sponsor and the latest version of the Opera browser, Opera One. What I would consider the most forward-thinking browser experience to date. Built-in ad blocker, free VPN, and a clean modular design. But that's not even the best part. Opera also includes their own internet-connected AI chat with Aria, making results far more relevant, and even fixes your organizational mess with Tab Islands, allowing you to group relevant tabs together and keep things organized, delivering the perfect browser for anyone who wants a faster, feature-rich, and more secure browsing experience. So why wait? Follow the sponsor link below and download the free Opera One browser today to try the new generation of internet browsing. The Galax EX Gamer has everything you would expect from an RTX 4070. 12 gigabytes of super fast memory, upgraded ray tracing, and DLSS 3 with frame generation. But that's about the limit of how this card is similar to Nvidia's Founders Edition, which to many could be a good thing, because Galax seems to have listened when it comes to common community concerns, and even implemented some interesting features that I think will appeal to a lot of people. But ultimately, how is the EX Gamer different? And is it different enough in a meaningful way? Well, let's compare the physical before we see which one performs better. Starting with the unboxing. Points go to NVIDIA here. The unboxing experience for the Founders Edition is nothing short of just overkill and reminds me of a game that I just can't quite put my finger on. But whether you're talking Founders Edition or EX Gamer, there is only a single accessory for both of these cards, which is an adapter that do wildly different things. For the EX Gamer, this is an RGB input adapter that allows you to wire your motherboard or say Corsair IQ lighting into the graphics card directly, auto detecting input and switches back as soon as there's no signal, meaning the card is compatible with almost all RGB software, not just Galaxies. But because the Galax card uses a single standard 8-pin power cable, you won't need to adapt to the potentially problematic 12 volt high power connector on the Founders Edition, which interestingly uses two 8 pin power cables. So we'll have to see if the Founders Edition can take advantage of that extra power later in the video. Taking a look at the physical design, I think the Galax looks good, but I love the look of the Founders Edition clean aesthetic and small footprint compared to the EX Gamer, which is about 50% bigger in terms of total volume and is more like 2.25 slots compared to to the true two slot design of the founders. But there are clear benefits to the bigger design, the most obvious being the bigger heatsink and the additional ARGB fan, which all illuminate from the central hub and is the only 4070 that has this style of fan illumination, which works nicely with the addressable RGB logo on the side, compared to the Founders Edition, which has none. But if you wanted even more lighting and remote control of it, well, you can control the lighting in one of three ways, through the input cable, via the desktop app, or via the mobile app, which doubles as a system monitor, which could be useful to a lot of people. But let's quickly see what's under the hood and have a look at the board design of these two cards, which as you can see, there isn't too much different here. We of course have the memory modules running along the bottom edge and the right hand side of the core in the middle. These are the capacitors, these are the MOSFETs and these are the inductors, which the Founders Edition has fewer of. A six phase design compared to eight phases of the Galax and both should be fine for this level of card. 
But talking about these features in the context of performance, I'm expecting the Galaxy card to run a bit cooler because of its larger design and bigger fans, but probably not quieter. I'm also interested to see how the dual 8-pin of the Founders Edition is going to affect performance, especially in terms of overclocking. And as we know how a 4070 should perform compared to other models, we will only compare these two cards against one another. So let's stick them in a test bench and see how they perform. Starting out with stock thermals using Fermark, before we move into our games comparison. Here we can see that the Founders Edition is anywhere from about 7 to 12 degrees hotter compared to the Galax card, especially those hotspot temps. And although the fan speed percentage suggests that the Galax card is working harder to keep those temps lower, that isn't necessarily the case, and I'll have to show you why in a bit. But this means that in our thermal torture test, the Galax is anywhere from about 9 to 16% cooler at stock compared to the Founders Edition, which you might think is due to the fans running faster by default, as they were in the low 60% range compared to the Founders Edition low 40s. That is until we compare real fan speed, which is actually lower on the Galax card, but not by much, about 5%, and this is what they sound like. showing that the fans on the Founders Edition will likely perform better when pushed to the max, but the Galaxy Card's cooler and additional fan does a better job overall. It's also worth mentioning that the Galaxy Card does draw more power at stock by about 5%, though both cards are considered quite efficient, which is important to many. But more important is the performance, so let's fire up some games and synthetics to see how they compare. Because although the Galaxy Card does keep itself cooler, the frequency for both the core and the memory is almost identical, leading to basically the same performance, as you can see here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and also here in Heaven Benchmark. It's about 0.6% difference overall, which is within standard run-to-run -run differences, and means we should look at the overclocking capability of both of these cards, because this is where I might have both won and lost, but not in the way that I wanted to. Let me show you. The reason overclocking was particularly odd is because there are three main components that contribute to a good overclocking card. Number one is the thermal headroom. If a card is running cooler, it can typically clock higher. Now, this can go either way right here. The Galaxy card is clearly running cooler, but its fans have less headroom to play with, and if we need to start pushing more air, that could be really quite a win for the Founders Edition, as it has a lot more headroom. The second component of a good overclocker is how much power headroom it has. To push the card harder, it is going to suck back more juice. And as you can see here in MSI Afterburner, the Founders Edition can push an additional 10% on its power limit, whereas the Galax, you are locked at 100%, meaning the Founders Edition should pull ahead, until the third component of a good overclocker just messes everything else up, the silicon lottery. Because graphics cards are extremely complex devices containing a highly sensitive microtransistors, no two cards are the same, even when comparing two identical models from the same brand, meaning that a card with low temps and lots of power headroom like the 4070 Founders Edition that I have can just fall flat on its face for no apparent reason, which is pretty much what happened here. I was able to push the 40 70 Founders Edition to plus 190 on the core and 1450 on the memory. Anything more than that and it was just unstable. Whereas the Galax EX Gamer managed to be stable at 250 on the core and 1500 on the memory. That's about 32% better on the core, resulting in the Galax card pulling ahead on clocks and increasing its lead by just that little bit further, while also affecting the Galax card less in terms of thermals. We've gone from 9 to 16% better than the Founders to more like like 11 to 18 percent better while now pulling less power than the founders edition but it's worth remembering especially when overclocking there is no guarantee here and just because this specific card can overclock better than this one doesn't mean they all can so what does this break down to who should buy the 4070 founders edition and who should buy the galax ex gamer well if cost is your main concern it looks like the Founders Edition is going to be a bit cheaper, and they are consistently in stock. But if performance is what you're after the most, the difference here is negligible, and either one is recommended. And for those most interested in power draw, the Founders Edition runs slightly more efficient at stock. But if the look of the Galaxy card matches your theme, if modding appeals to you, more on that in a 
a sec, or if the additional RGB extras are more what you're after. The Galaxy card looks to be a good option. But I also wanted to show you guys a bit of a side project that I've been working on. The best way to compare value between graphics card models. Let me introduce you to GPU Smart. This is my website that allows you to compare the price and performance of every current and previous generation GPU using our data in the best value GPU series. And you guys watching this video will be the first to test it out right after the guys on the TechLens Discord. And you can find a link to both GPU Smart and the Discord down below the like button, as well as links to both of these GPUs reviewed today. But I did mention modding this card. How would you do that and what would I do? Well, check out this video showing the 4070 Ti version of this card. We took a very different approach with it and had a lot of fun with a 3D printer. All of that will work with this version as a cool amount in exactly the same way. And you can check that out by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated and I hope you have an amazing day.